In this lesson, we will learn two tests called the ratio and root tests that allow us to test a series for absolute convergence. So the ratio test says that we have a series A sub n with non-zero terms. This series will converge absolutely if the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the ratio of the n plus first term to the nth term is less than 1. The series will diverge if the limit as n goes to infinity of this ratio is greater than 1 or is infinite. And the ratio test is inconclusive if this limit equals 1. If you end up getting the ratio test being inconclusive, this means you have to try something else. It is not the case that every single problem in this section requires the use or can be proven for tested for convergence or divergence using the ratio test. So just be aware that you can't just ditch all the, th all the other tests you have already learned and this ratio test is just an additional tool in your series testing toolbox, so to speak. So we are going to prove the ratio test by comparing this series to a geometric series. So we're going to compare, that's the general idea, to a geometric series. So we'll start by proving the first part about convergence. So for the first part, we know that the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n that is equal to something L which is less than 1. Now what we're going to do is we're going to choose some R such that this number R is in between L and 1. So we have L is less than R which is less than 1. So eventually, if you have that little n is bigger than some boundary, capital N, you know that the ratio of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n will be less than r, or a sub n plus 1 will be less than absolute value of a sub n times r. Now, by a similar argument, you can show that a sub n plus 2 over a sub n plus 1, that will also have to be less than r, which implies that a sub n plus 2 is less than r times a sub n plus 1 but we know that a sub n plus 1 is less than a sub n absolute value times r, so this is less than a sub n times r squared, and etc. You'll end up proving that a sub n plus 3 is less than a sub n times r cubed. So what you know now is the sum from n equals that capital N boundary onto infinity of the a sub n's is less than the sum from that capital N onto infinity of a sub n's times r to the n power. Now, this is just some number. In this case, we know that r is less than 1, so this is a convergent geometric series. And the fact that we left off the first, say, maybe 100,000 whatever number of terms doesn't, con doesn't change the fact that this will be convergent. It will still add to a finite number of things. So. What we know now is, using this logic, we know that the sum of the a sub n's 
we know that those are going to converge as in actually converge absolutely which implies convergence. Now to prove the second case is actually even easier. So if a sub n plus 1 over a sub n, if that ratio approaches some number L which is bigger than 1, we know that eventually the ratio of a n plus 1 over a n eventually is bigger than 1 or a sub n plus 1 is greater than a sub n and since the terms are non-zero this means that the limit as n goes to infinity of the a sub n terms are not zero so the series diverges by the test for divergence Now the ratio test works really well for series involving factorials and powers. So let's let a sub n equal 5 to the n over n factorial and we'll find the limit. Let's also say what we're doing. We'll apply ratio test. So tell me which test you're using. We'll find the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. So when we input n plus 1, we have 5 to the n plus 1 over n plus 1 factorial. Now dividing by a to the n is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of a sub n. So we'll have times n factorial over 5 to the n power. Now we have to do a little bit of simplification here, but it shouldn't be super tricky. So first of all, 5 to the n plus 1 is 5 to the n times 5. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 times n times 1 less. So that's actually n plus 1 multiplied by n factorial, multiplied by n factorial over 5 to the n. And now some things will cancel. The 5 to the n's will cancel the n factorials cancel, and we have the limit as n goes to infinity is actually 5 over n plus 1, and that is 0, which is less than 1. So by the ratio test, your sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 5 to the n over n factorial converges actually absolutely. And absolute convergence is even better than actual convergence, so it would be good to also say that. Alright, let's test this series for convergence or divergence. So once again, I'm just going to let a sub n equal negative 1 to the n times n cubed over 2 to the n. So we'll find the limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. So that will be negative 1 to the n plus first power multiplied by n plus 1 the quantity cubed over 2 to the n plus 1 multiplied by 2 to the n over negative 1 to the n times n cubed. Now the negatives will just kill off, will be just killed off by the absolute value bars. So we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity. Now n plus 1 cubed is the same thing as n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1 over 2 to the n times 2 multiplied by 2 to the n over n cubed. So the 2 to the n's will cancel, and we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity. I'm just going to say 1 half multiplied by n cubed plus 3n squared plus 3n plus 1 all over n cubed, which is the same thing 
dividing both the numerator and denominator by 1 over n cubed, we'll have 1 plus 3 over n plus 3 over n squared plus 1 over n cubed all over 1. And that will be 1 half, which is less than 1. So by the ratio test, your series converges absolutely. With these questions, when you're showing your work on, say, like your take-home quizzes or your exam, half of the work is really in the explanation of why these things work, not just that it converges or diverges. All right, so we'll determine if this test converges or this series converges or diverges. So once again, we'll let a sub n equal n squared times 2 to the n plus 1 over n factorial. And we'll find a limit as n goes to infinity of a sub n plus 1 over a sub n. So that will give us n plus 1 squared <coughs> multiplied by 2 to the actually n plus 2 over n plus 1 factorial multiplied by n factorial over n squared times 2 to the n plus first. So we can think about n plus 1 squared as n plus 1 times n plus 1. 2 to the n plus 2 power is 2 to the n times 2 to the second. n factorial. n plus 1 factorial is n plus 1 multiplied by n factorial. And then we have n squared and 2 to the power of n plus 1 is 2 to the n times 2. So now we'll just cancel things that cancel. I can cancel one of those n plus 1s, the n factorials, the 2 to the n's. And I guess I could cancel a singular 2. So I'm left with the limit as n goes to infinity of 2 times n plus 1 all over n squared. And because the denominator has a larger degree than the numerator, this limit will equal 0. So by the ratio test, the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of n squared 2 to the n plus 1 over n factorial, that converges absolutely. So we, f we need an example of a series that diverges to show that this can actually happen. So here is an example where this will, we will have divergence. So let's let a sub n equal n to the n over n factorial. And we'll find the limit as n goes to infinity of the ratio of a n plus 1 over a n. Now plugging in n plus 1, we have n plus 1 to the power of n plus 1 over n, factor n plus 1 factorial multiplied by n factorial over n to the power of n. <clears throat> now this gives us, now n plus 1 to the n plus first power is the same thing as n plus 1 times n plus 1 to the nth power. n plus 1 factorial is the same thing as n plus 1 times n factorial. So the n plus 1's cancel, the n factorial's cancel, and we have the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 to the nth 
over n to the nth, which is the same thing as the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 all over n to the nth power, which is the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over n to the nth. This is a semi-complicated limit to figure out. You have to use some of the logarithm tricks and L'Hopital's rule, but this is by definition actually what e is. So this is equal to e, which is about 2.71, which is certainly bigger than 1. So by the ratio test, you know that this series diverges. I will actually run through why that limit is e. So let's let y equal 1 plus 1 over x to the x. L'Hopital's rule only applies to functions, so we need to have a function of some variable x. Now natural log both sides, so that will equal x times 1 plus 1 over, oops, so ln y will equal ln of 1 plus 1 over x to the x power, pull the x down, and now we're going to find the limit as x goes to infinity of ln y. And this is one of those indeterminate forms. It is officially the indeterminate form infinity times 0. We can make it into 0 over 0 by putting that x in the denominator and expressing it as 1 over x. That is the same thing as the previous term. It's just a funky way of writing x times ln of 1 plus 1 over x. But now we have a 0 over 0 form, and we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Now, the derivative of the numerator will be 1 over 1 plus 1 over x multiplied by negative 1 over x squared. The derivative of the denominator is negative 1 over x squared. Those negative 1 over x squareds cancel, and we have the limit as x goes to infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over x, which is 1. <coughs> so you know that the limit as x goes to infinity of ln y is equal to 1. So ln of the limit as x goes to infinity of y is equal to 1, moving the limit inside the log. Now undo the log using e, and the limit as x goes to infinity of y is e to the first, or e. So that is to actually prove that that limit is e. It probably won't get that hard on an exam because that's a lot of work but this may happen on your homework, so just be aware of this. So this next example looks like a kind of strange combination of a geometric series multiplied by n. So it's not obvious if this is going to converge or diverge. Let's try the ratio test. Let's let a sub n equal n times 2 thirds to the nth power, and we'll find the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n. Now, in putting n plus 1, we'll have n plus 1 multiplied by 2 thirds to the n plus 1. So that's the a sub n plus 1. Now, when we divide by a n, that's going to stick the n in the denominator. And we'll have 3 over 2 to the nth power. So this is the limit as n goes to infinity n plus 1. Now that n plus 2 thirds to the n plus 1 will have 2 times 2 to the n over 3 times 3 to the n. And then we'll have 3 to the n over n times 2 to the n. And a bunch of stuff will cancel. The 3 to the n's cancel, the 2 to the n's cancel. We end up with the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n plus 2 over 3n, and if you divide the numerator and denominator by n, 
we have 2 plus 2 over n over 3, which is 2 thirds, which is less than 1. So thus, by the ratio test, this series converges absolutely. In this particular example, if you try to apply the ratio test, it is going to fail. You're going to get that the limit is 1 and it is inconclusive. So let's run through that and just see what happens. So if we let a sub n equal negative 1 to the n e to the 1 over n over n cubed, we find the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n. So we'll have negative 1 to the n plus first, e to the 1 over n plus 1, all over n plus 1, the quantity cubed, multiplied by n cubed over negative 1 to the n, e to the 1 over n. So the negative ones can absent value and go away. What we're going to get is the limit as n goes to infinity of n cubed over n plus 1 cubed. And with these e's, common base means that you can subtract those exponents and we'll have e to the 1 over n plus 1 minus 1 over n, which when you get a common denominator gives you a limit as n goes to infinity, n cubed over n plus 1 cubed multiplied by e to the power of negative 1 over n times n plus 1. So this first part will go to 1, this part will go to 1, so my limit is 1, and sad face, we can't conclude anything. So if this happens, you have to try some other test. Now in this particular example, I would guess that this is probably going to converge because of the fact that as your n's get large, this e to the 1 over n is going to keep getting smaller, and you have this divided by n cubed, which is looking a little bit like a p-series. So I'm going to prove that this series converges using the direct comparison test. All right, so we're going to show actually that this series is absolutely convergent and therefore convergent. Okay, so notice that the absolute value of a sub n is equal to e to the 1 over n over n cubed. And the e to the 1 over n's are decreasing. e to the 1 over 1 is equal to e, which is about 2.71. So the terms of the absolute values of the a sub n's are less than 3 over n cubed. And the sum of 3 over n cubed, that's the same thing as 3 times the sum from n equals 1 to infinity of 1 over n cubed, which is a convergent p-series. And so, thus, your series from n equals 1 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, e to the 1 over n over n cubed, converges absolutely. It's a bit of a bummer to go through all that work to try to apply the ratio test and determine that it's inconclusive, but if that happens, use a different test. And if once you get good at this, you'll be able to tell if that if the ratio test works right away and not bother testing it and use a different test. Part of the content of these lessons is learning when to apply which tests, just kind of like you learned when to apply which integration techniques to find different types of integrals. 
Now, a, another useful test is called the root test. This test is very useful when you have things raised to powers, and the conclusions are very similar to that of the ratio test, but we're not going to prove it. So you have that a series converges absolutely if the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the terms is less than 1. It diverges if the nth root of the absolute value of the terms is greater than 1 or infinite. And once again, it's inclusive if this limit is 1. And as I said, this is often useful when you have numerators and denominators both raised to powers of n. In that case, you can use the ratio test, it's just that the limits that you get are rather complicated to compute. Let's use the ratio test to determine the convergence or divergence of this series. So if we let a sub n be e to the 3n over n to the n, we will find the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of the a sub n's. So that's the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of e to the 3n over n to the n. And nth rooting divides the powers by n. So we have the limit as n goes to infinity e cubed over n, which is equal to 0. e cubed is just some constant. So thus, by, and since this is less than 1, by the root test, we know that the sum from n equals 1 to infinity e to the 3n over n to the n, this converges absolutely. Alright, for this one we'll determine the convergence or divergence of the series from n equals 2 to infinity, negative quantity, negative 2n over n plus 1 to the 5nth power. So let's let a sub n equal negative 2n over n plus 1 to the 5nth power. We'll find the limit as n goes to infinity of the nth root of the absolute value of a sub n. So that's the limit as n goes to infinity nth root of the absolute value of negative 2n over n plus 1 to the 5n. So that will give us the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value negative 2n over n plus 1 all to the fifth power. And you can divide the numerator and denominator inside of the fifth power by n and that will give us negative 2 over 1 plus 1 over n to the fifth. And now as n goes to infinity, this is going to go to negative 2 to the fifth power, or 32, which is bigger than 1. So by the ratio, or the root test, we know that the sum from 2 to infinity of negative 2n over n plus 1 to the 5n. We know that this diverges. So just a warning, if the ratio of root test fails, you have to apply a different test. So the ratio and root test will always fail when you have things that sort of look like p-series. And so I'm not even going to apply the ratio test in this one because it's going to fail. If you want to try it yourself and convince yourself that it fails, go for it, do it. I'm not going to. But one hint here is this negative 1 to the n means it's probably a good idea to apply the alternating series test. So we're going to apply the alternating series test. So we'll let b sub n equal root n over n plus 1. And so the first thing is note that the limit as n goes to infinity of the b sub n's So if you divide the numerator and denominator by root n, we'll have 1 plus root n plus 1 over root n, which is 0. 
So the limit of the terms is zero. And then we also need to determine that this, these terms are decreasing. So to do that, I will use the derivative. Let's let f of x equal root x over x plus one. So using the quotient rule, the derivative of this function is x plus one times one half x to the negative one half minus just root x over x plus one squared or x plus one over two root x minus root x all over x plus one squared. Now if I multiply the numerator and denominator by two root x, I can clear out the denominator that is in the numerator. And I have f prime of x is equal to x plus one minus 2x over 2 root x times x plus 1 squared, or 1 minus x over 2 root x times x plus 1 squared. Now this function, this derivative is not always negative, but is certainly negative, so f prime of x is less than 0, as long as x is bigger than 1. So at least ultimately these b sub n's are decreasing. So ultimately, the sequence of b sub n's is decreasing. So by the AST, this series converges. The ratio test works really well when you have factorials. So let's apply the ratio test to try to determine if this series converges or diverges. So let's let a sub n equal 2n factorial over n factorial squared. And we'll find the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 divided by a n. So inputting, just be careful when you input n plus 1. So we'll have 2 times n plus 1 factorial over n plus 1 factorial squared multiplied by n factorial squared over 2n factorial. So that's the limit as n goes to infinity of 2n plus 2 factorial over n plus 1 squared times n factorial squared. So those n factorial squares can cancel. Now 2n plus 2 factorial will be the same thing as 2n plus 2 times 2n plus 1 times 2n on down. So there's the 2n factorial. So now those 2n factorials can cancel. And we have the limit as n goes to infinity. Expanding out the numerator and denominator, we'll have 4n squared plus 6n plus 2 divided by n squared plus 2n plus 1. This is equal to 4, which is greater than 1. So by the ratio test, this series diverges. one final ratio test with a slightly tricky factorial. So once again a sub n will be the terms of the series. Let's find the limit as n goes to infinity of a n plus 1 over a n. So we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity of negative 1 to the n plus first, 2 to the 4 n plus 1 over 2 n plus 1 plus 1 factorial 
multiplied by 2n plus 1 factorial over negative 1 to the n, 2 to the 4n. I think it's easiest to take this 2 to the 4 to the n plus 1 and make that 16. So we'll have the limit as n goes to infinity of 16 to the n plus 1 over 2n plus 3 factorial, because this 2 will distribute, and adding 2 to 1 gives us the 3, multiplied by 2n plus 1 factorial over 16 to the n. So limit n goes to infinity, so 16 to the n plus 1 is 16 to the n times 16. That 2n plus 3 factorial we can think of as 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2, and then I would have 2n plus 1 on down, so that's the 2n plus 1 factorial. And then a 2n plus 1 factorial in the numerator, and a 16 to the n in the numerator. And all the terms are positive, so I can drop those absolute value bars. So 16 to the n's cancel, 2n plus 1 factorials cancel. We end up with the limit as n goes to infinity of 16 over 2n plus 3 times 2n plus 2, which is equal to 0. So thus, the series converges absolutely.